Hi guys, this is Kurt from Whitetails Deer Hunting and today I want to talk to you about the importance of scouting deer in March. We'll see you in a minute. We actually had a little bit of a melt this week, so the pup and I decided on a Saturday morning uh, that we'd get out. 21 degrees, kind of chilly, still a little bit of snow, but we were itching to get out, so here we go. Today I want to talk to you guys about why I think it's important to spend time out in the woods in March scouting deer. Uh, from just getting out after being cooped up for two months and enjoying the weather, to being able to see deer sign that was just uncovered by snow, to finding sheds, there's a lot of important reasons why you should get out and scout deer in March. The first reason is because of weather. In March, the weather begins to break a little bit. In upstate New York, you get still freezing temperatures at night, but you do end up getting some warm days as well. I try to get out at least eight or 10 times in March and do as much scouting as I possibly can. Uh, I just wanna get out and enjoy the weather. Been cooped up for two months since hunting season. The dog wants to get out. Just getting fresh air um, and being outside is awesome. Sometimes I'll be out there and it'll be a beautiful sunny day, and sometimes I'll be out there and it'll be pouring rain or even snow uh, but I make the most to get out in March and start thinking about deer season all over again by being outside I'm telling you scouting in New York State wait five minutes the weather will change more snow March 26th baby the second reason I get out in March is because it's so easy to see uh, there's no leaves on the trees other than your evergreen needles and either Mount Laurel or Rhododendron. For the most part, I can see three to four times further in the woods than I can when leaves are on the trees in spring or summer. Just makes it a lot easier to cover ground as you're getting through the woods. In the springtime, I don't have to worry about the green briars. I don't have to worry about big thickets with thorn apples. For the most part, I can get through these areas that are really high stem count. I can see all the way through CRP fields, and it just helps having that extra vision without the leaves on the trees. One of the other big advantages of being able to see easier without leaves on the trees is being able to plot uh, your entrances to get to your tree stands and exit paths. Uh, when I can see through the woods further, it's a lot easier to determine some open paths that make it easier to get into a tree stand uh, undetected, trying to avoid bedding areas and trying to pay attention to the wind so that I come in from behind a stand so I'm walking into the wind to get to my stand from where my vehicle is parked. A third reason I get out in March is because it's so easy to see deer sign that's been preserved under snow since the fall. When you think about it, uh, fresh scrapes, fresh rubs, uh, deer behavior as in trails, all of these things get preserved under the ice and the snow in the winter time. And if you get out in March, just after the snow comes off the ground, most of these things are preserved so you can see them quite easily. You haven't had new vegetation grow up and around. Uh, these scrapes, uh, for the most part, the scrapes are still open if they were open at the end of the season and the end of the rut. So it really makes it a lot easier to see this preserved sign when you get out early in March. As soon as uh, leaves start growing, growing as soon as plants and vegetation start growing uh, a lot of these scrapes end up disappearing and you can't see them in the summertime unless they're being used in the summertime I also find that rubs are a lot easier to find uh, when you're looking for rub lines when you're looking in March. Oftentimes when you're out there in the spring and the summer and you find a rub that was fresh from the previous year, you can't see or enough through the woods to see if there's a rub line that's present. Oftentimes going out in March from one rub, sometimes you can see another rub if you look 360 degrees and find a direction that a buck was traveling and you may be able to find some of these rub lines a little bit easier. I tend to focus a lot more with plotting waypoints on my Onyx map with uh, 
scrapes than I do with rubs. And I always plot these scrapes and I plot them in brown. And what I end up doing is when the next fall hunting season comes and I'm hunting an area, I always try to get back into that area where I had found a scrape a previous year to see whether or not I have a scrape occurring in that same area the next year. If I find some areas where scrapes are used year after year, these are areas where oftentimes I'm gonna put a trail camera up to see if I can find a little bit more evidence of what bucks are in that area. Rubs are great and sometimes you can find uh, hubs of rubs where you know that buck are bedding, but oftentimes rubs are only used once and they're at nighttime and sometimes they're just really not a great indicator of where a buck is gonna be traveling that next fall. Deer behavior in the travel routes uh, that are evident in March are much different from the deer behavior and travel routes that you're gonna find in spring and summer. Obviously, when you're looking at spring and summer, you're looking at different food sources. You're looking at more areas that are present for bedding. If you have real hot temperatures, deer are gonna be bedded in valleys and in areas where they can stay cool. Totally and completely different from what you're gonna see the end of October and into November when you're spending the most time in the woods. And that's why getting out in March really helps to be able to determine some of these deer travel routes. Uh, you can see matted down leaves. Sometimes you can see hoof prints still preserved in mud. And it makes a big difference understanding that behavior in March because it's gonna be so much similar to the behavior that you're gonna see at the end of the hunting season in the fall. I'm really not big on getting into bedding areas that I know deer use all year long. So if I get in there in March without leaves on the trees, oftentimes I can see quite a ways into some of these thick areas without having to get into those bedding areas and leave my human scent. And I just think it makes a big difference. Some of these areas that may hold some of your mature doe and mature buck tend to be areas where just a little bit of human disruption is gonna push those deer out. and It'll be a long period of time before they come back again. So being able to walk around the outsides of these areas and still be able to see in because there's not leaves on the tree is going to minimize the human scent that you're leaving in these areas. Depending upon where you live in the country, uh, sheds can drop anywhere from just after New Year's all the way until the end of March. Uh, usually here in upstate New York, we're looking at finding the most sheds in the month of March itself. Uh, definitely it's a lot easier when there's not snow on the ground, but you may have a melt and you may have some deer drop sheds and those sheds freeze in the ice with another snow and it may be easier to find these sometimes because they're sticking up out of the ice. Uh, we saw a nice eight point there the third week of March this year that still had antlers on and I saw several bucks at the same time that had already shed their antlers and you could see the exposed burrs on the top of their head. Usually if you get to the end of March and beginning of April, uh, and you start finding sheds, you'll find a lot that have been chewed up because rodents are starting to chew on those uh, sheds at that time to get some calcium to help them out. Just finding sheds uh, just as fun and exciting itself. Uh, I've got the dog out with me and I spent a lot of time in the winter training the dog. Uh, we went out quite a few times this year scouting and didn't really have much luck. Uh, but there in the end of March, we did find a couple of sheds and I was proud of him and he was pretty excited to find these sheds. When I'm going out to scout in the morning, I usually leave just after sunrise. Uh, that way when I'm traveling to the area that I'm scouting, there's still deer moving. I may see them in the fields or I may see them moving in and out of bedding areas or woodlots. And I do the same thing in the evening. I tend to leave maybe about a half hour before sunset so that I can also see deer moving as I'm leaving and heading home. Just seeing some of these deer numbers may also help you get an idea where deer are present. Uh, oftentimes though you got to be really careful with that though because sometimes these deer are in their winter deer yards still in March. But again just seeing deer is not only interesting but it's also giving you an idea where these deer are present knowing that when we get to spring and summer these deer are going to disperse and spread out. But again when you get to the end of the fall some of these deer may be coming back to these same areas to feed. When you take a look at winter deer yards for the most part these are lowland areas that are near food oftentimes have uh, conifers. A couple of reasons the conifers are really important for deer is number one with the needles that are present on these evergreens all year long it tends to knock down the speed of the wind and it allows the deer to use less energy to stay warm because there's less wind chill. So just being in these areas where the wind speed is decreased is definitely a great benefit for deer to be able to conserve energy over the winter.
The other thing is that snow that falls on the boughs of these evergreen trees oftentimes won't reach the ground and instead this snow gets trapped up in the actual branches and most of the time this snow usually evaporates back into the air before it even falls down to the ground. Thus you usually see in these coniferous areas that uh, especially after heavy snows that there's lower snow loads and it's easier for deer to get around and it's easier for deer to dig and find some food if there's mixed oaks present in these evergreens, especially in some of these areas we find in upstate New York, which are really dense hemlocks with a lot of mature, dense red oaks uh, that are found in them. I found a couple areas this year in early March that I know I'm going to come back and muzzleload hunt. Some of these areas really had a lot of deer sign, not only fresh tracks, but a lot of fresh poop. And I think when I come back at muzzleloader season just around Christmas, I'm going to find that these deer that are present during muzzleloader season are the same deer in the same area that are present in the beginning of March around these winter deer yards. So I'm excited about finding a couple of these areas to come back to for late muzzleloader season next fall. The sixth thing that I do in March that I spend a lot of time at is looking for food sources and marking these and plotting them with my waypoints on Onyx. From finding areas with hard mass such as uh, hickory, beech, and oak acorns, uh, to looking at farmers' fields and taking a look to see what was in those ag crops the previous year, uh, finding apple trees, and finding areas with really thick, dense brows. I really spend a lot of time because I can see so far through the woods marking these places on Onyx so I can come back to them during the spring, summer, and early fall and I can take a look at trying to match up deer behavior based on when those deer are using those foods to eat, whether it's summer, September, October, November, December, and really focusing uh, my efforts on hunting those food sources when the deer are around eating them the most. The seventh thing that I do is I really look for funnels. Whether or not I'm looking for funnels that parallel uh, ag fields, whether I'm trying to find funnels uh, that parallel uh, benches on steep slopes, uh, funnels that may come between saddles, funnels that travel along rivers or swamps, or even just those habitat changes where there's old growth pine plantations next to mixed hardwoods. But I spend a lot of time looking for these funnels and trying to mark these funnels at these times when I can see further through the woods. Even though you can't cut branches down on New York State public land, it doesn't mean that you can't create some funnels by moving branches and brush that's already dead on the ground. Sometimes if you find an area where you know there's a deer trail and two trails veer off, you may be able to sit down and block off one of those two trails and move them in one direction to make it easier to determine where they're going to go and set up a stand just by putting some piles of brush in the way of one of those uh, trails that they're using. So it's just another way to be able to determine along with natural funnels of where deer might go and if you do this early early enough in the spring, uh, you may change some of these deer behaviors and patterns to your benefit when you get ready to hunt and set up stands in the fall. The last two things that I like to do in March really relate more to uh, hunting equipment than they do actually deer behavior. Uh, the first one is I always like to get out on those first couple of warm days in March, uh, shoot my bow, uh, make sure if there's anything that needs to be tuned up on my bow that I get it taken care of right away before the warm weather comes and I really start shooting four or five, six times a week. I also like to go ahead and take a look at my arrows and get them to the shop, have them take a look at them and see if there's any arrows I have that are bent, uh, need to be thrown away. And I also save a ton of money uh, by getting a lot of my arrows refletched. Uh, I think I got a dozen arrows refletched this year and it cost me under 30 bucks, saved me a ton of money on arrows this year. Now obviously after a couple of years when you've beat those arrows up pretty good, uh, it's easier to go out and buy a whole new set of a dozen or a dozen and a half arrows arrows, but I usually go ahead and then keep those arrows for like three or four years and just get them refletched to save some money every year. But again, I think it's really important in March to go out and get that bow tuned up, check all your equipment, make sure everything's working right, and that way if you have to have any replacements made or strings replaced, you can do that before you spend a lot of time shooting as the weather warms up. 
The other thing is uh, checking my trail cams. Uh, usually I leave those trail cams out uh, through January and into February. By the time that I get to March, especially the end of March, most of the buck have dropped their antlers by then. I go ahead and usually get these cameras in, uh, get all my cameras checked out, make sure they're all working properly, uh, make sure that I get SD cards uh, figured out to see if any of them have gone bad during the year, buy some replacement SD cards, at that time, you know, usually there's a lot of old batteries I got to throw away and start thinking about spending a fortune on buying new batteries again. But I think it's really important the end of March there to get those cameras out, check them all, because really for probably the next two months, you know, maybe the mid to end of May, I'll get those cameras back out. But sometimes I'm going to find that those cameras, I have found some new areas through scouting that I'm not going to be putting cameras back in the same places again. What I found is really important on public land because I have like 10 cameras that I use right now is all of those cameras I have marked in my notes on my phone and I also have them plotted on Onyx. And it's important to make sure that you understand where all your cameras are because if you've got them spread out on public land, it's real easy to forget where one is because you put one there last year but it's not there this year or you had it there and you didn't see any movement so you moved it. So it's really important to make sure that you mark where these cameras are found. Along with me going out to get my trail cameras and bring them in, I'm also studying human pressure. I'm really taking in a look at tree stands that I'm finding and marking them on Onyx, or human pressure like garbage or spent shells. Uh, I can't tell you the number of hunting stuff that I found. Just this spring I found a strap that was working great. I found two old straps. I found an arrow with a broad head still on it that was in great shape. Um, I found tons of knit caps. So sometimes just finding some of this gives you an idea of the human pressure that's present during the hunting season and gives you an idea that maybe those are some areas that you want to stay out of. I find that scouting in March is invaluable for me, guys. I, I use the information that I learn to go ahead and get prepared in the summertime and really to get me prepared when I'm looking to set up uh, my tree stands in the fall. I just think the amount of information and data that you can collect at that time is so important uh, to get yourself ready for the hunting season, especially when you look at those late October and November months when the sign you're finding in March is the same sign that you're finding out at the end of the season. Guys, I hope this helped you out. This is Kurt from Whitetails Deer Hunting. I hope that you subscribe and like my videos, and we'll talk to you guys soon.